So welcome to today's presentation where I will be showing you how we can connect D265 Finance directly with Workday using our two Connect products called Direct Connect and uh, HR Connect. These products allow you to directly integrate the two applications um, and today we're going to be showing you how the worker data associated with Logan McNeil flows from Workday and into D265 Finance. Based on that data, D265 Finance will not only create workers but also all sorts of associated records such as system users, project resources and suppliers. So if you go back into D265 Finance, then the first thing we need to have a look at is our Direct Connect module, which is the module that actually integrates D265 Finance and Workday. So that module is our flexible API management module that makes integrating to external systems such as Workday and a lot of other systems into a plug and play experience. So if I open up our API connections here, then given this is our test system, you can see I have a lot of other systems uh, that we are testing against. However, down here, you can see our Workday connector. In that connector, you just put in the appropriate uh, endpoints and uh, access keys, and then our connector will automatically know how to connect with uh, the system. Part of our Direct Connect module is also that we, we don't create anything that's hard coded. We make sure that all of the data elements that you have from Workday, that they are fully configurable and remappable. Um, so what you're seeing over here is actually Workday uh, data fields or data types, which you can configure and map, map into certain areas of D65. And that allows us to guarantee that you can change the use of Workday without having to uh, redevelop uh, your integrations. Uh, for now, I'm going to update our API mapping so that it's requesting Logan and no other users. So I'm going to copy Logan's employee ID. Not only can we uh, map the incoming data, but we can also filter the data that we are getting returned from Workday. Uh, by these uh, direction types sending, where we are essentially sending a specific filtering criteria uh, as part of our query. So here we go, that's basically how easy it is to enter in a filter criteria. And if all of these are left blank, then the query will just return all of the workers that's in the workday system. Um, but for now, we're only interested in uh, one particular employee. So now that that's configured, I'm gonna run a periodic job and this allows you to schedule when you want to import workers. So this now sends a message to Workday, which will basically ask for the worker data that has um, that fits our filtering criteria as part of the API request. As part of our product, there's also a, an API monitoring and management module. Um, where you can actually see the, the raw messages being sent to Workday. Um, and you can also see the raw messages that we are getting in return, which is what we are creating the data based on. And this is processed just fine. And that's basically the heavy lifting on the integration part that's been done by our Direct Connect module. So from here, we're gonna switch over to our HR Connect module, where the raw data will uh, sit in. So I'm going to go to the human resource module and in here we have an HR Connect tab which I'm going to expand. And then under inquiries we have uh, imported worker records. And here we can see that Logan McNeil has uh, been imported with all of the requested data against that record. From here the next step would then just be to take it from this table and start creating the actual employee data. And as we start doing that, there is also this status area where you can monitor if there's any records that might not uh, get processed correctly. So this also acts as a um, error management uh, area. But before we process this, uh, this particular worker, then I'm just gonna show you some of the parameters that lies inside the HR Connect product, uh, which allows us to determine how a particular worker record is processed. 
So if we open up the setup tab, we both have global parameters and we also have legal entity specific parameters. So the global ATAR parameters, we now see an, an ATAR connect tab. And in here we can go in and determine whether or not we want to use the, the workday ID as a, um, as a worker ID in Dynamics or whether or not we just want Dynamics to generate one. In addition to that, we can also activate the dimension mapping for new workers. And what this will do is that it will take a department or cost center code. And based on that, it will put a dimension string against the worker and supplier if that's created as well. We can also parameterize if a if we want a system user created, the system users that are created, they will not be activated, but they will be in the system linked up to the um, associated worker record. So that's the, the global parameters. If we then go to the legal entity specific parameters, then in here, we also have an HR connect tab and then by legal entity, we can now go in and determine whether or not we want to also create a, um, a vendor that's associated with the worker record. And if we are creating a vendor, do we then also want the system to create a, um, a vendor bank account and update and maintain that information? And if we're doing that, then the system needs a, a default bank account ID that it can use. So we also have support for that. If your, your workers are submitting timesheets or expenses and or if you're scheduling with them then you're probably going to want to create them as a project resource as well so we have a parameter for that as well when an associated vendor is created then you can go in and you can define which default vendor group that vendor becomes part of so this is the logic that's being applied when we start processing the worker records in the staging table given our we already have our data in our import worker records then the next thing we need to do is we need to go and process those records. And this can obviously also be done as a batch process so that it becomes fully automated. Um, for now, I'm just gonna say okay. So the system has now processed the, the worker records. And just to make sure, we can go back into our imported worker records. And we can now see that the, the record is in status processed. So from here, um, we're just going to have a look at data that's been created on the back of this uh, one record from Workday. I'm going to start off by looking at the actual employee and we are looking for Logan. So if I just do a quick search, Logan, and here we have the employee. And as we can see, the, the personnel number is the, the same as we have back here in, in Workday. Then if I open up the employee and have a look at the employment tab, then we can also see that the system has correctly associated financial dimensions based on the cost center that we received from Workday. And if I open up the employment history, then the system has also used the correct employment start date, which would be the 1st of January, 2000. Um, just to check, we can have a look at Logan's uh, worker record in Workday. And down here, we can see that Logan was hired on the 1st of Jan 2000. So now that we validated that that's been created correctly, we can have a look at some of the other data uh, that's been created. So we had the option of creating suppliers turned on. So let's just check that Logan has been associated with a supplier and that a supplier has created specifically for her. And in here we can see that Logan is associated with a supplier and that the supplier is a specific employee supplier account. And now that we validated that it's been created and associated, then let's have a look at the actual record itself. So I'm gonna go into accounts payable and have a look at Supply account for Logan McNeil. Open up that detail. And as you can see here, the default group, a supplier group has been associated with that record as well. And if I scroll down, then the same financial dimension set is also associated with this supplier. So it, it all just flows through. Then if we open up the 
associated bank accounts for this particular supplier. And we can see that the system has created a supplier bank account with the information that's available from uh, Workday. So this employee is now ready for us to start paying out any kind of uh, reimbursements. Then if we go to the project management and accounting module, we will go in and we'll just validate that Logan is also now available as a project resource, which will allow us to start scheduling and registering time and expenses against that person. You can see we have Logan McNeil here, and again, correctly associated uh, with the legal entity and with the, with the correct worker. And the last thing for us to go in and check is that we also have a system user created. So we'll have a look at the users and in here, if I do a quick search on Logan, then here we have Heifer. And not only is the system user created, it's also correctly linked to that worker record. So for a system administrator, if Logan would need access to D65, the only thing they would need to do now is to enable the, the user and assign the, the correct security profile. And that concludes the demonstration of our HR Connect and Direct Connect product, demonstrating how to integrate D365 with uh, Workday and fully automate the creation and maintenance of employee records between the two systems. Hope you enjoyed it.